Hey folks, welcome to the channel. As you can see, I'm in front of my leatherworking station and today's video is going to be on sheath making. So we're going to go over making the sheath for this guy. This is the stainless hunter that I did a couple of videos ago. So we're going to make the sheath for this. So stay tuned folks and uh, remember to like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me out and uh, let's check out this build. So we're ready to get started to make this sheath. The first thing I think I should go over is what tools you're going to need to get this done. So first off, um, obviously you're going to need a pattern and we'll talk about how to get this in the next step. But some basic tools. Uh, you're going to need these stitching markers. I mean, you can do it without these, but you're going to get wanky stitch lines. So get some of these. You'll need a tool like this. And the great thing about this thing, pick it up. It's got a little guide here, and this is for doing lines down the side of your leather here. So this is, I think, critical. You definitely need one of these, and there's different little heads that go in this. You need one of these guys, which is kind of a grooving tool to take the edge off of the leather, especially when you want to do um, burnishing the edge. You need a burnisher. We'll talk about what that's for. And you'll need various little dabbers and you'll need some water because you need to wet it. You need wax thread. Uh, you'll see how I do this later and you'll need a couple of needles. I use really long three inch needles. Pencil, paper, a good knife to cut the leather. I use this scalpel style. Uh, I also use these shears. They work really well um, to cut through leather. So let's get started. Okay, we're ready to design our sheath. There's really, well, there's a ton of different kinds of sheaths, but we're going to talk about two main styles today. First off, I always suggest if it's a new sheath, draw it on a piece of paper. Okay, you will thank me. What I suggest is you take your knife, you draw out the knife, without moving it, on a piece of paper, be sure to include kind of the top parts, and sometimes it's best just to kind of draw the whole knife. Okay, so there's my knife. So that's where it has to fit into. So for knives like this, you want to make sure to account for anything like a recurve, because your knife has got to go in. So I, I tend to draw a straight line here because you can't fit this recurve and things like this this raised um, false edge draw a straight line here so your knife is going to slide into the sheath like that okay next take a ruler and draw i like to use three eighths and put little marks all around your knife at the 3 8 mark. Okay, I'm gonna do this quickly for the sake of the camera. Okay, I'm just gonna ballpark it here just for... Okay, and then connect your lines. Okay, so that's your sheath. Now you need to decide how high up your sheath is gonna go. If this knife had a guard, typically your knife, your, your sheath rather, is gonna end at the guard. Okay, at least the front portion is gonna end at the guard. Okay, it's rare that you're gonna be able to fit the guard into the sheath, so that's typically where they're gonna stop, at least the front of it. It may sit on a piece of leather. So now we need to decide, are we going to do a sheath by a front and a back and do stitching all the way down or are we going to do another style where we basically draw a center line like something like that fold it over and make a taco sheath so we're not going to stitch this side we're only going to stitch this side the other thing you need to account for is a belt loop. I like to build in just the back of the sheath as a belt loop. 
you need to also think about the handedness of the person using it. If they're right-handed, okay, if this is your sheath, you're gonna want the belt loop, okay, on this side, okay, and you're gonna want the, sh the knife to go in here because it's gonna be carried on their right side. If they were left-handed, the belt loop would be here and the knife and this kind of sheath would go like that, okay? It's gonna go on top of the belt loop here if you get what I mean. So you need to think about these things beforehand. That's why I say, take two pieces of paper, tape them up so you get a nice wide surface, draw it out with the um, belt loop. Personally, I like my belt loops to have the smooth side of the leather on the outside. Some people will do it the reverse. So here I am, I have my pattern. This is gonna be a taco sheath. Okay, it's going to go in like this. Actually, I'm going to flip it over here. This will be the sheath, okay, because it's going to be for a right handed person. So you can see it's going to be like this, carried on the right side. So the knife will go in here. So, what I like to do, this is going to be the smooth side of the leather. And I usually put an R here, because that's, for a right-handed person, that's the smooth side. Because then when I cut it out, I'm gonna fold this over. This becomes my belt loop. I will stitch this, and then this will be stitched here. Okay, and then I have my belt loop and my knife goes inside. Okay, and you'll notice this is all smooth leather and this is all smooth leather. You'll ask why the little wing here? It's because you need to think about where the leather is going to connect. You're also going to have what's called a welt, which is a piece of leather that runs down the edge where the blade is going to be. You need to put that piece of leather there so that when someone puts the knife in the sheath, they don't slice all of your stitching. So there's going to be a piece of leather glued in here and then when you fold this over, you're going to stitch through all three of those layers. Well, because there's three layers there, I need three layers here. So that's why I put that little wing there. Okay, folks, that's our pattern. That's the reason we have the pattern the way we do. Let's get the leather and we'll cut this out. So I've got my leather out. This is nine ounce leather. Um, that's just the, the weighting of it. This is a, I think a grade A or grade B leather. It's quite good. I think, um, I think I paid a hundred, 150 bucks or something for this piece of leather. I'll put a link down in the description for where you can get this. This is what they call a double shoulder. So it's a pretty big piece. I've got my template. And again, remember, you're going to have to think about whether you're cutting on the smooth side or the rough side because it will make a difference remember i put an r here for a right-handed sheath i know which way to go so um make sure your leather's nice and smooth there's no defects or anything like that um, on the smooth side it doesn't matter as much down here uh, be careful around the edges because sometimes the edges have wrinkles and stuff in them um, but i've already cut a piece out of this so this isn't actually the edge so I'm gonna put it close to the edge just to save some leather, but not too close. Uh, the other thing I should mention, when you're dealing with leather, wash your hands. <laughs> Cause any little mark, especially you're in a, you know, you're in a, a shop with a forge with dirt, uh, w wash your hands first. Cause you'll start to get marks on the leather and it won't come off. So um, either wash your hands or wear gloves. I actually wear rubber gloves when I'm stamping the leather and you'll see that later. So I got my pencil. Now I'm just gonna trace out my pattern here lightly. Don't use really strong pencil marks in case you have to move it. So I do it pretty lightly. Okay, 
I like these charcoal pencils um, for this kind of thing because it actually comes off pretty easy with an eraser. Now time to um, cut this out. Again, I like the shears. Uh, you have to be careful because the shears will want to ride in to the uh, to the leather, so you need to actually start a little bit away from it, like about a sixteenth or so. You can see it's pretty thick stuff. You don't want to use the five ounce leather, which is kind of like what they make wallets out of. Um, it'd just be too thin for sheaths. Uh, definitely keep your leather in whatever it came wrapped in. I keep it in this dark plastic that it got shipped in. Uh, you just want to protect it, keep the dirt off it, especially if you keep it in the shop here like I do. One thing you want to avoid doing is taking shears and clipping and ending at a point here. So what's going to happen is you're going to rip this little corner. So it's okay to use it um, up to a point, but I never close the shears all the way. For anything that's straight, it's easier just to put um, a ruler down, pick yourself up one of these metal rulers and just You want to save this stuff. Don't throw this stuff away. You're going to need it for uh, later when you need to glue something. And uh, I'll show you what I mean later. And it's good to practice stamps and other things on. So uh, I always like to keep these scrap pieces. So one thing you don't want to do once you have your leather like this is get excited and try to start to mold it into your, uh, your desired pattern because um, it's not very pliable right now. And you will actually crack the leather if you try to bend it too much. That is why we have some water. So if we wet it, you'll see how quickly this absorbs water and how much it absorbs. You can see it. So that's used generally the first thing I do is wet it down. Okay, now the leather is a lot more pliable and you can bend it around and check your symmetry, how it's going to fit together, how your... Okay, so it looks like that is about right. That's kind of what I want. Okay, so I like to do just a rough kind of fitting here just to make sure I didn't screw something up or miss something or miscalculate something. Okay, so this is where you need to think about things like if you're going to fold something down, okay, you're going to need to stitch it, okay? If you're gonna stitch it, that means there's gonna be stitches exposed on the other side. And if you have stitches exposed, you're gonna to have to think about that when you do your stamping, because obviously you don't want a nice pattern and have stitches over top of it, or in case you put your logo on it, you don't want the stitches going over your logo. So calculate where your stitches are going to be. Okay, so. I think I'm actually going to reduce this about a quarter inch because my stitches are going to, for this flap, are going to be around here. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a bigger border across the top and then a border and my stamping or my pattern for my sheath is going to go in this center part here. But of course it's going to be bent around. 
and you have to calculate things like if you have a logo, where are you going to stamp your logo? I know I'm going to put some stamping down where the belt loop is, so I'm going to put a border here as well just to mark it out. Okay, so I use this and I'm just kind of scoring the leather. So there's the border of my leather. And, you know, I goofed up a little bit here, but the way I'm going to stamp it, it's not really going to matter. Now we're done outlining and we're ready for stamps. So let's talk about stamps. So first off, um, I have a stamp for my logo. So you need to decide where that's going to go first, because that's a big, bigger stamp. So you need to do that. Then we get into some different kinds of stamps, and there's a couple I'll talk about here. These are what I refer to as geometric stamps, meaning you're going to stamp it, and then you can move it a little bit. It'll connect to the other parts, and you just keep stamping a large area. But it's geometrical, like this one is a, a bunch of hexagons. They all have to meet up. Once you get to the edge of something, you can't do half a hexagon here. So it's hard to meet up to lines. So what I suggest you do for any of the geometric type stamps, start in the center, do an area in the center, and then use something that's a little more random. I like this um, field stone pattern. I will do a field stone pattern from my central stamp out to the edge. And you'll notice this one actually has a flat side, so you can put it right against the lines. And if you stamp over, these and you crisscross them, it, it actually, you can't really see it. So it's a good border. So I'll tend to do that as a border with something in the center, which is a little more geometrical and then around my logo as well. So for stamping, I like to use this uh, anvil. This is, this used to be my knife making anvil, but uh, I got a bigger one. So now I use this exclusively for leather work. Uh, that's why I keep it nice and clean. I'm going to do stamping, so the first thing I want to do is wet this down. And you might actually have to do this, wet this, a couple times uh, during your stamping, depending on how long it takes. I'm going to start with my logo, because that's the biggest. I want my logo on the front of this sheath. Okay, and mine has a top and a bottom, so I was going to make sure which one it's on. So. With the curve, I want the logo right about there. Obviously, you want to keep this very still. Give it a good couple of good wax, and there's my logo. Okay, printed really nice. Okay, another trick for the honeycomb or any kind of geometric logo, you'll notice it like it kind of clips in. Don't try to just put one. You really, I like to use as many of these as an anchor point as I can. So I've got three of them as an anchor point to know that I'm going to get it to continue. If you start trying to just do one, that's when you're going to get it out of whack. As soon as you get this out of whack, you'll ruin your pattern. Okay, stamping's finally all done. It looks pretty good. Slight mistake here, but really minor. So once the dye goes on it, uh, it should be fine. Next step, um, 
put the die on it, but right before I do that, I'm just gonna test fit this part here, uh, and then I'm gonna scythe, or, or, or basically strip down this piece, shave it off so it's it, it, there isn't a, a, a ridge here, and um, that's got an, cause that's gonna get glued there. So I'm gonna shave that down and then I'm gonna dye uh, the whole thing. So for leather dye, I use this Feebing's leather dye. Make sure you get the alcohol-based one, not the water-based one. Um, the water-based one is terrible. So just wring this out a little bit and then just apply it liberally. You're going to have to do a bunch of coats, especially with a pattern like this. You really need to saturate all those cracks. This is a light brown, but by the time you're finished, it's kind of dark. If you want that light, what looks like a really light brown, you really have to get tan. So well, that dries a bit. What we need to do now is make the welt. Again, that's the piece that is going to go along this, this seam here, which this is gonna fold over and stitch down. So I usually leave a little bit hanging off because this is just gonna get, you're gonna take this down with the grinder. So it's okay to leave a little bit hanging off uh, on the outside. Okay, before I glue this, I like to dye these as well. Reason for that is once you glue it, um, the glue will actually prevent the dye from going in. So I like to get this nice and dyed uh, just in case. So we're going to be gluing the smooth side down. Before I glue any smooth side, I usually like to put some scores in it. So I just use this little tool here. So now you're going to want to put some contact cement. And I'll put a, a list of all of the items I'm using down in the description. And you want to be really generous with this stuff because it, it will also soak in and you want it really wet with contact cement. Okay, I'm actually going to be gluing this portion at the same time. So... Actually, before I do that, there's one thing that we forgot to do. So we're going to go back and do that now. And that is burnish the edge. And you'll understand what I mean, what burnishing is. But I want to burnish the edge of the belt loops. So burnishing is using one of these, which is just a wooden block. And we're going to move it across the leather. When you do this... You can see it kind of causes the leather to go shiny. And if you keep doing it, you get an almost luster to it. There. And that will keep your leather from, from fraying or otherwise degrading over time. And we can do a bit of this after, but... For places that will be hard to get to, it's a good idea to do those first. Okay, so we've got this burnished pretty good. We are ready to apply this. This part we're going to burnish after this is on here, so let's glue this.
Another reason why you want leather pieces is because you don't want to apply clamps directly on your leather or you're going to leave marks from your clamps. So I've got this where I want it and now I've got leather on the back and the front. I'm just going to get a bunch of clamps. So we'll leave that at least for a couple of hours, preferably overnight. Okay, I've glued this up. Um, I've actually already done the stitching on it here. I'll show you guys the stitching when I do this one. Um, I've wet the spine. Now I'm going to fold it over and and start the final glue up. Um, of course, before then, you got to burnish all these edges that are going to be hard to access. But there's what the sheath is going to look like. Okay, we have this folded over and glued. Now let's check it out after we remove the clamps. Not too bad. I can see it is a little over here, but we're going to go grind that off. Okay, let's take this to the grinder. So I generally use a pretty rough belt for this, not a new one, um, but this is a 36 kind of worn, and I'll put it on about half speed. So now we're ready for stitching. We've got this um, ground here, and th that's the reason why you want to get this nice and even first, because you're going to be doing a line, and you don't want to be doing a line and then grinding off your edge. So make sure you do that first. So back to our scoring tool. So this scoring tool, if you can see it, it actually digs a channel. So what we're going to do is dig a channel all the way down. Okay, before you get to the end, be very careful because it's very easy for this thing to get away from you. And we're going to just bring it all the way to here. And the reason we put that channel first, we want the stitches to lay inside that channel so they're kind of flat. If you don't, then your stitches are raised and it just, just doesn't look as nice. Okay, now with that done, we're going to use these stitch markers. And... You know, definitely use these. Uh, don't try to do the stitches without these because you will end up with wavy stitches and it's very, very noticeable. For straight lines, you can use just the really long ones. And what I do is I'll just put them in. And you don't need to go all the way through with these and I recommend you don't. Is give them a tap just to give you the markers. And then I like to put two tines in the last two and give it a good tap. We're gonna end up drilling these with a drill, so you're really just looking for markers. If you have any curves, it's best to use the, uh, the smaller one here. If you get into really tight curves, you can use these, but uh, I don't think this curve is tight enough for that. Okay, so I got all my stitch markers. Okay, one thing, do not put your channel on the back side. Because uh, when you drill these holes, sometimes they come out on a slightly different place and they won't come out in exactly inside your channel. So drill the holes first and then connect the holes with your grooving tool um, so you make sure they're in your line because it looks really bad if you have stitches and then a groove beside it. Sorry folks, I forgot to turn on the camera for the drilling, but as you can imagine, I'm just putting a 16th inch drill bit through each one of the holes and uh, making sure it comes out the, out the other side with a backing board underneath. Now you can see when you did these, just by the way this is glued up, you can see this is just a little bit closer, um, which is why I only put the channel on one side. Now I go back and put the channel on the other side. And this is the back side of the sheath, so it's not as critical anyway. So for stitching, you're going to need some wax thread uh, and whatever color you want to match your, um, your sheath. I typically use either red or black. Um, for this one, I'm going to use the red. Uh, it's great to have some of these little scissors. You're going to need a lighter to burn the ends. 
and then some needles. And I use these three inch um, doll needles. So what I will typically do is just take the stitching side and just gently, uh, and these are smooth jaws, so I don't have to worry about marking the leather, but I just, enough to hold it, okay? Just so it's not gonna go back and forth. You really wanna be on either side of the sheath, and you'll see why in a second. So for thread, you want to take a long piece of thread, and typically I think they say it's, for the um, size of what you're gonna do, you need about six or eight times that length. Well, that's gonna be unwieldy um, to try to do in one shot. So I'm gonna stop halfway and re-thread. So I'm gonna take about, maybe about 36 inches of thread. So now I'm going to thread a needle onto both ends. If I can manage to do that here. And then just leave it like this with a, about two or three inches hanging out. And it will normally just stay like that, and you'll see why. If you try to knot it, and I did this when I first started trying to tie a knot here, your knot's going to get stuck every single time. So don't do that. So now we're going to be using what's called a saddle stitch. So what you're going to do is put the needle through, and it should go in pretty easy if you use a 16th inch drill bit. And you're going to pull this. This may be off camera, but you're going to pull this until the two lengths are the same. Okay, so now that they're the same, and then I'm going to take one needle, put it through the next hole, pull it through, make sure you don't, when you pull this, you have to pull the thread, don't pull the needle, because you'll pull it off the end. Okay, just gently pull it so it's tight, and then you're going to take this needle and put it back through the hole you just took the other one through. Okay, and you might have to pull a little harder for this. And now you're going to pull it tight and it should cinch on itself. So that is essentially the saddle stitch. You're just going through the same hole, same hole, same hole, like all the way down. Now, once you get good at it, it goes pretty quick. Here, sorry, blocking the camera. Gently, and then I always like to pull up on this one to kind of get the thread out of the way. And then try not to go into the thread, go into the hole, and then just pull it through. And at every time, you're going to pull this tight, and you can watch it kind of squeeze here. And there you go. Okay, folks, I'm going to go and do the rest, and uh, you can watch as I go. Okay, folks, I am done. You'll notice that uh, I did do, end up doing this in one shot. I didn't have to re-thread, but it got so tight at the end, I had to put the needle through and then re-thread it, which was a bit of a pain in the butt. But, and at the end, I always like to go through the second hole uh, and go back uh, so that when I'm going to do the stitching, I have both of them coming out the back so you don't see what I'm about to do which doesn't look bad, but it has to be done. So I will cut these about maybe, I don't know, just under a quarter, probably about an eighth. There. And now we're just going to burn the ends, and this is wax, so it's gonna melt. Just let them ball up a little bit and then you can just push them down, and that will create little flat areas so that they will not unthread. So there we go. Now we're just going to touch this with dye and um, also dye this edge. But before we do that, we're going to take this edge off. So we're going to use this grooving tool. I guess it's an edging tool. Um, start at the edge. And this also helps when you burnish it. You'll have a rounded edge. 
there. And the reason I'll do this before I um, uh, before I dye it is because obviously you're going to take the dye off in that area, but also because it's easier when the leather is really stiff. Um, and once you dye it, it's going to be a little softer. So now we're back to our dye. We're just going to touch the whole stitch area, and this will also help to hide the stitches and it'll make them blend in. I like to put a generous amount of dye on this area. And sometimes you're gonna have some leftover glue, like right there. If you do and it's, you know, unsightly, you could just take it back to the grinder and just grind that off. That is such a small piece when I burnish it, it's uh, really just gonna disappear. Okay, and have a good amount of dye, because you want that channel on the other side of your stitches to blend in. Okay, and this is a good time to just go over any other areas you want to clean up the dye on. See, and now we can get to burnishing this edge. Okay, so there it is, mostly burnished. I got a little more work to do on it, but we'll do that at the very end. So now we want to get the knife in here. Um, you can see it looks pretty narrow, but again, leather stretches pretty well. So um, the dye is mostly in now, so I'm going to wet it again. And you'll notice the, uh, the water beads up a lot more than it used to. So now it should be a little more pliable. What you can do is now put the knife in and kind of use your thumb and press around it. And sometimes you want to form the knife right around it. For this sheath, um, I really just want a pocket here, so I just want to make sure that it fits. Uh, what you don't want to do is just leave your knife in there overnight, especially if it's a carbon knife, because the moisture that's in it now will actually rust your knife. This is a stainless knife, so it shouldn't be too bad, but um, I wouldn't want to do that anyway. I'm just doing it to form it. And uh, you want it snug so the knife's not gonna fall out, but you don't want it so that it rubs a lot on the knife. And this is, a, this is kind of the way you want it. it just kind of slides in the pocket perfectly. Let's talk about finish. So I like to use this Carnuba cream and I'll apply this generously on it and then let it dry. And when it dries, it's a wax. So you're gonna see some wax build up, um, but then I'm gonna buff it and that'll come out nice and shiny and, uh, and it'll look really good. I will treat it at the end with some of this Neat's Foot Oil. And oil is really what's gonna keep your leather nice and soft and supple, um, as opposed to stiff. Um, and if you keep applying water, it will make it stiff. So we're gonna use oil after we wax it.